Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to balance chemical equations. It's... Welcome back. Before we get on into actually balancing some equations, we need to have an important conversation. And it goes like this. Uh, if all you are going to do is just sit there and watch this video, there's really only so much that you're going to learn about how to balance equations. You can't learn this by just simply watching what I do. You have to actually make yourself go through the process and practice it on your own. You know, it's a lot like sitting in driver's ed class. You know, you can sit there and you can watch the videos about driving and you can hear everybody talk about driving, but you don't know anything about actually driving a car until you get behind the wheel yourself and start to drive. It's the same thing with this, okay? So what I'm gonna do in the video is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take you through some examples of how to balance some equations, and then I'm going to give you some, just some blank ones for you to try and at that point, I'm going to want you to pause the video, try to balance them yourselves, and then go back and then see how well you did. That's the only way you're going to learn how to do this. All right? That being said, let's jump on into the computer. Let's go. All right, well, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to start with this first one up here, and all we're going to do is just we're going to start on the left, and we're going to go to the right until we get everything balanced. Um, now, as you can see, this particular equation is a double replacement reaction because everything here is a compound. Um, and actually, before we get started, though, I want to point out something. You see over here, we have NO3, which is nitrate, a polyatomic ion, and we also have a polyatomic ion over here, the same one, NO3, on this side. Anytime you see a polyatomic on both sides of the equation like this, um, don't treat it like the individual elements. Okay, so like I'm not going to look at this as nitrogen and oxygen. I'm going to look at this as nitrate, one full complete ion. And trust me, that will actually make things a lot easier. All right, so here we go. Over here on the left, I've got one barium. And on the right, I've got one more barium, so I don't need to do anything with that just yet. All right, on to chlorine. I've got two chlorines here on the left and only one here on the right. All right, so I need to fix this. Well, I can't change this formula, right? NaCl is what it is, right? I can't change that. I also can't put a number in the middle of the compound. The only thing I'm allowed to do is put a coefficient in front. So I'm going to put a 2 right here. So I now have two chlorines. Although, if you'll notice, that also means that we now have two sodiums over here as well. All right, so then when I come over here and I see there's only one sodium, well, I now need to put a 2 right there, okay, which also affects the number of nitrates, which is a good thing because now we've got two nitrates on the left and two nitrates on the right, and everything is balanced, just like that, okay? Let's move on to the next one. All right, so here we've got a decomposition reaction where KiO3 is breaking down into Ki and O2. All right, so here we go. We got one potassium, one potassium, so we're good. One iodine, one iodine, also good. Oxygen, however, we have three oxygens on the left and two oxygens on the right. So whenever you see this particular issue come up where you have an odd number on one side and an even number on the other, what you want to do is you want to double the odd number and it will make things even. And then when you do that, more often than not, it actually solves your problem for you and you don't even really need to worry about it. All right, so check this out. So I've got two uh, potassiums and two iodines now over here on the left. All right, so I'm gonna put a two like so. And now when I look at my oxygen, I have six oxygens. And over here, there's only two. Okay, well, that's easy. Six divided by two is three. And now I've got everything balanced, all right? One more example. Here we got uh, the combustion of ethane, C2H6, with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Now, it's important to recognize this as a combustion reaction uh, because combustions require a specific uh, method to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remember uh, the phrase CHO, 
CHO. And that is the order in which I'm going to balance everything. Okay. Now also pay close attention to this particular example as there's a very specific reason why I chose this one. All right, so let's go. We've got two carbons here on the left and only one on the right. Okay, so I'm going to put a two right there. I've got six hydrogens on the left, only two on the right. All right, so I'm going to put a three like so. Now for the oxygens. Two oxygen on the left, and on the right, we got two times two, which is four, plus three is seven. But can I do seven divided by two and put 3.5 right here? Well, of course not, because our coefficients have to be whole numbers. So what we're going to have to do here is uh, I'm going to get rid of these, because obviously those didn't work. Now, whenever you see this particular issue coming up, what you do is you double everything. So this becomes a 2. That was a 2, so it's now a 4. That was a 3, so now it's 6. And by doubling it, we're actually solving that little problem that we just saw. Okay? So 4 times 2 here is 8, plus 6 is 14, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. Right? So I got a 2, 7, 4, 6, and now it is completely balanced. All right, so whenever you are working with combustions, now it's not every combustion reaction, but certain combustion reactions will require you to double everything in order to make things work. All right, so I have just now given you three examples and walked you through the process. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause real quick. I'm going to give you some more examples, and I want you to work those out, and then I will show you um, uh, the answers after you've had a chance to work on them. All right, so I'll see you here in a little bit. Okay, so here are three more equations I'd like for you guys to balance. And when I tell you to, I want you to pause this video, work these out on your own, and then once you're ready, hit play again, and then you'll be able to see the answers. All right, so pause here in three, two, one, pause. All right, welcome back. Here are the answers. Uh, hopefully you got them right. If not, you can always uh, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you and try to explain uh, how this all works. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this and practice along with me. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below or send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And if this is your first time watching, thank you so much. Please hit that subscribe button so that you can get all future uh, tutorial videos that I publish here at Chemistry Talk with Dan. But remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Find your mind.